Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. I'm Doug Kimmel, the senior deacon, and I'm welcoming all of you, those present in the sanctuary as well as those online, to the Union Congregational Church of Hancock, UCC. Wherever you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. We are happy to have you with us, physically or in spirit. And even those who are watching the program recorded at your leisure on YouTube, you are welcome here. The services are posted usually the same day on both YouTube and Facebook. The announcements today, our Lenten study group will meet on Wednesday evening at 7 p.m. We will meet here in the fellowship hall and also on Zoom. There are uh, study guides called Vincent Van Gogh and the Beauty of Lent that are available in the back of the sanctuary, or you can get one from the church by calling uh, Vicki or TJ at the church number. The Loaves and Fishes Food Pantry is meeting volunteer receptionists to greet clients, check them in, and make future appointments. They are needing people who can serve on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday from 7.45 a.m. until 1 p.m. or Wednesday afternoon from 3.30 p.m. to 7 p.m. If you would be willing to help, they will provide training and you can be flexible about the schedule if necessary. For those who are watching online, we ask that you would please mute your sound so that uh, we can all participate and not have the reverberations of different people speaking at uh, different times to the electronic uh, slowdown. So please mute unless you are making announcements during the announcement period or requesting prayer during the prayer section. And also we have a TV up here now. Uh, Mike has built a shelf so that all the people in the congregation can see those people online. So if for any reason you don't want to be seen, Please uh, turn off your video. <laughs> I want to thank uh, Phil Devinish again for preaching last Sunday in support of the Maine School of Ministry. Donations are still gratefully accepted in envelopes that are provided to the back of the sanctuary or by email or PayPal through our website. Donations are also being accepted for humanitarian aid for the people of Ukraine. This month, we also will be collecting donations for the United Church of Christ cause One Great Hour of Charity. This is one of our five annual donations that the church participates in, beyond and above the support of the local church. We have birthdays and anniversaries this week. The 12th is Tom Severance. The 13th is Zachary Spaulding. Are there any others that you know of, or does anyone have any announcements that you'd like to make today? Being none, let us center ourselves and prepare our hearts and minds for worship.
Welcome everyone. It's good to be with you. I'm Reverend T.J. Mack. We are the Union Congregational Church of Hancock, Maine, and we try to be a presence in this community and beyond. And no matter who you are, as Doug said, and no matter where you are, you are welcome with us. Please stand in body or spirit and join us in singing our Please join me in the call to worship. Welcome to the Lenten season. We remember Jesus' journey from Jordan to the wilderness. There are places of wilderness and temptation in our lives. We remember Nazareth and Capernaum and heal the healings and the parables, storm stilling and an abundance of loaves. We still need stories and a gentle touch. We long for peace and tumult and nourishment for a deep hunger. We remember the final days in Jerusalem, the garden and the cross and the tomb. As we walk the path of these forty days, may the light of their meaning guide the steps of our faith. <laughs> Let us pass the peace to one another. Peace be with you. Also. As Robin lights our peace candle, I'll share a poem. I'll share a poem that's just in you to watch that light. I'll share a poem from Camden poet Dave Morrison. A note to self. There is madness in your world, your country, your state, your town. Maybe in your house, maybe in your heart. What can you do? You are one person, one drop in the sea. How can you change huge, dark forces? Start small. Try this. Don't judge. Don't hate. Don't be unkind in front of children. Try not to be afraid. Try to get comfortable with what you don't understand. Question the source of your information. Question your beliefs. Slow down. Exhale. Look for our sameness and try to respect our differences. Treat people as if they are family, because they are. Consider what's best for everyone. And if it's too much, remember at first, keep it simple, be kind, be fair. Be kind, be fair. Dave Morrison from 2017. Yeah. Yeah. Please join in singing, here in this place, or gather us in, in our red hymnal number 250.
Please join me in the invocation. Oh God, we thank you for this Lenten hour of worship. Teach us to understand ourselves, to be reconciled to one another, and to love you with profound joy. Lead us in such simplicity of faith and spirit that as individual Christians and as a congregation, we may be strengthened in temptation and renewed in grace. Amen.
The New Testament reading is from Luke 4, 1 through 13, the New Revised Standard Version. Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit, returned from the Jordan and was led by the Spirit in the wilderness, where for 40 days he was tempted by the devil. He ate nothing at all during those days, and when they were over, he was famished. The devil said to him, if you are the son of God, command this stone to become a loaf of bread. Jesus answered him, it is written, one does not live by bread alone. Then the devil led him up, the <clears throat> led him up and showed him in an instant all the kingdoms of the world. And the devil said to him, to you I will give their glory and all this authority, for it has been given over to me and I give it to anyone I please. If you then will worship me, I, it will all be yours. Jesus answered him, it is written, worship the Lord your God and serve him only. Then the devil took him to Jerusalem and placed him on the pinnacle of a temple saying to him, if you are the son of God, throw yourself down from here. For it is written, he will command his angels concerning you to protect you and on their hands, they will bear you up so that you will not dash your foot against a stone. Jesus answered him, it is said, do not put the Lord your God to the test. When the devil had finished every test, he departed from him until an opportune time. And now a poem by Mary Oliver called Invitation. Oh, do you have time to linger for just a little while out of your busy and very important day for the goldfinches that have gathered in fields of thistles for a musical battle to see who can sing the highest note or the lowest or the most expressive of mirth or the most tender their strong blunt beaks drink the air as they strive melodiously, not for your sake and not for mine, and not for the sake of winning, but for sheer delight and gratitude. Believe us, they say, it is a serious thing just to be alive on this fresh morning in this broken world. I beg of you, do not walk by without pausing to attend to this rather ridiculous performance. It could mean something. It could mean everything. It could be what Rilke meant when he wrote, you must change your life.
please pray with me. O oh Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be pleasing to you, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Lent is an invitation. An invitation to change our lives. An invitation to spend more time with God. Intentional time. The scripture begins with reminding us where Jesus had been. Jesus returned from the Jordan River where he had been baptized. Luke's narrative takes us from the affirmation of Jesus being God's beloved son at his baptism to being thrust, thrust into temptation, being thrust into the wilderness. We are invited during the season of Lent to purposely venture into the wilderness. We are invited to stay there in the wilderness for longer than is comfortable. There is the temptation to hightail it back out of there immediately, whether a grieving a loss or a failure or a missed opportunity, or life change. It is tempting to distract ourselves with alcohol, or drugs, or mindless activities. Anything to distract us. God invites us to not ignore our anguish, but to dwell in it. To stay with the sorrow and the pain as long as it takes to heal. Stay present. As with Jesus, God does not leave us to fend for ourselves in these times. God is with us, giving us strength and hope through every ordeal. The scripture began with Jesus being led into the wilderness by the Holy Spirit. The scripture ends with the devil departing. Another word for the devil is, of course, Satan. And in Hebrew, Satan can be interpreted as accuser or adversary. When the devil had finished every te test, our scripture says, he departed from Jesus until an opportune time. Our adversaries leave us, but not for long, certainly not forever. Our adversaries are always awaiting our moments of weakness. We continue to be tested in ways large and small. We know that our lives are not divided into neat categories. Wilderness journeys through grief or despair do not suddenly end when the 40 days are up. Our burdens do not necessarily end after 40 years of desert wandering nor do temptations end. They are with us for our lifetime. In our scripture this morning, the adversary beckons three times. First, attacking Jesus by way of his physical hunger. When that failed, the temptation was a hunger for power. And as a final resort, the adversary tried to appeal to a hunger for faith that desire to have God prove to us that God is there in all circumstances and in all situations. In Luke's narrative, the text tells a story about how evil works on the basis of distortions and lies. In these three tests, the adversary presents wants as needs, falsehoods as truths, and distrust as faith. The second test in our scripture was especially troubling to me. The adversary is purporting truth when it is in fact fiction, when it is in fact lies. Then the devil led him up and showed him in an instant all the kingdoms of the world, and the devil said to him, To you I will give their glory and all this authority, for it has been given to me and I can give it to anyone I please. If you then will worship me, it will all be yours. Testing and temptation 
We face it every day. So much so that we don't always recognize it for what it is. Where do we hear lies presented as truth? Almost want you to yeah. shout it out. <laughs> but, okay. In advertising, non specific, in advertising, in politics, and in our news media. Pretty easy. We all probably can conjure up some examples. There are misrepresentations made to sell more product, made to win elections, and made to increase subscriptions or viewership. All is damaging. All are damaging. We are at a point in the world history when it is increasingly difficult to tell real news from fake news. We live in a democratic society which allows for our civil liberties, including freedom of the press. A blessing and a curse. Or a blessing. We do not have one source of state-sanctioned propaganda. We have many sources of information, and it is up to us to discern how they are biased. News has bias. We have bias based on our education, based on where we grew up, based on whether we identify as male or female or non-binary. We all have biases based on our place in society, how we interact with the world. It is important to name them, to acknowledge them, and to consider what effect they have on our decision making. Lent is a time for introspection. And this passage led me to wonder, what if that adversary we most need to face is not external, but internal? How can we see ourselves in a new light? How can we see ourselves as others see us? How can we see the world around us in a new way? Start by changing ourselves, by challenging ourselves. We are at times hungry and at times fed abundantly. When our faith is strong, we can withstand the temptations to make selfish or short-sighted decisions. We may want to ask ourselves, what are we hungry for? What are we feeding ourselves so that we can resist the hungers of temptation. We may want to ask ourselves, what else do we need to nourish us in addition to tending to our physical hunger? We all need prayer as spiritual nourishment, knowledge as intellectual nourishment. One does not live by bread alone. We are strongest when we are full of the Holy Spirit. How do we nurture that presence within us? We are all invited to change how we view the world during this season of Lent. Whether it is through the paintings of Vincent van Gogh or through an effort to spend time in nature every day, I encourage you to look for where God is beckoning you to slow down. If we accept the invitation to live more fully with God during the six weeks of Lent, it is not if, but how our lives will be changed. Not if, but how. Amen. Please join in singing, In Christ There Is No East or West, in our black hymnal, Number 394, rise in body or strength.
flocked together in an intimate geography of stones and pinnacles. Gracious God, we confess that we have deep, aching hungers, and sometimes we can hear nothing but their clamor. We confess that we risk our well-being and flirt with self-destruction, hoping that we will be safe and loved. We confess that we long for power, self-control in our own lives, dominance in our relationships, and we are willing to give too much for this power. We have been tempted and we have sinned. Breathe in the silence of our guilt, the whisper of repentance, that we may receive the forgiveness. Amen. God's grace is given, not grasped. Because we are forgiven, we need not be empty, nor vulnerable, nor powerless ever again. God's grace and peace are yours. Amen. We are at that time in our service when we intentionally hold each other in prayer and intentionally hold people across the world, complete strangers, in prayer, knowing that God hears our prayers even before we form them. We have some prayers of thanksgiving. Last week, Patrice asked for prayers for Bruce's sister, Lynn. She did have a successful heart procedure and is recovering. And also Betty's stepdaughter-in-law, Lisa, is recovering from her heart procedure and is back home. So thank God for answered prayers, for people healing. And thanks for neighbors helping neighbors, whether it's moving books or helping with snow or delivering food. We are in the community with our hands and our feet, taking care of one another. Are there other prayers you wish to share, either online, through the chat, or by unmuting, or in the pews? Dean, we'll get a microphone to you. Okay, uh, this is a joy. After five years of being up in Alaska, my son, his wife, and my two grandkids, I'm moving to New England. <laughs> they are going to be around the Conway, Yon Conway area, beautiful area for those of you that have been up there and have seen it. So we are just delighted to pass through. Thank you. <laughs> Wonderful news. Yeah. For the family of Jimmy James, who passed away this uh, past week. Jimmy was an occasional visitor to our church. Uh, some of us knew him better than others, but he did, did attend. We attended a feeding suppers, and uh, his kids were involved in the Boy Scouts along with my son, Ben. So the family of Jimmy James, thank you. My joy today in light of my profound hearing from last week, is my husband is making remarkable progress and oh. went back to work on no, this day. <laughs> we still have a new normal to figure out, but I'm so deeply grateful. Our hearts, I'm sure, go out to all the people affected by the invasion of Ukraine and all the terrible consequences throughout the world that people are suffering, uh, immigrants fleeing, people living in terror, people being starved and threatened with all kinds of horrible things. So let us comfort each other and those who can help to hopefully the strength and power to provide the help that we need. Thank you. I don't I don't 
don't see any online chat prayers. Continued prayers of hope and healing for Steve and Myrna. Steve is in Portland. Continue prayers for Clayton and Marsha. He has new challenges every week, it seems, but is strong in spirit. Continue prayers for Annie and Reed, and Carolyn and Michael, and Kenny and Marsha, and Austin's cousin Danny, and Renata <coughs> and the women she cares for, and Betty and her stepdaughter, Molly. Eleanor's stepdaughter, Holly, Tom and Judy's son, Andrew, and his, their entire family, Danny and Clementine, Cynthia and Nancy, prayers for so many, and prayers for Grace in navigating their strange new worlds, Jane and Peggy and Barbara and Gertrude, all those that have experienced loss and are just struggling with each day or some days more than others. We offer our prayers for those who do not wish to be named, but are in our hearts. Those having or recovering from surgery, those suffering chronic pain, those awaiting diagnoses, all those affected by memory loss, all those living with depression, all caregivers who give of themselves, and all those suffering from addictions of any kind. We pause to offer our own silent prayers. Almighty God, we pray for all who live in places of threat and danger. Help us to make peace where there is war. Teach us to prepare a table where enemies may feast instead of fight. We pray for those who do not have enough, enough to eat, enough to wear, or enough justice. Help us to share the abundance we enjoy and to work for the freedom and dignity of all your children. We pray for those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. Make us tender caregivers that your healing power may be at work in us and through us. Keep us, your church, from being both uncertain and too certain. Help us to trust that the Spirit is leading us into new opportunities of faith and service. We ask this for ourselves and for all others. O oh God, hear all our prayers, spoken in silence, shared this day, and hear this prayer that Jesus taught to his disciples. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Traditionally, would pass the plates. Now, I just invite you to remember each Sunday in the sanctuary to put your envelope in the plate as you enter or as you leave, and online to mail in a check or use PayPal. But to continue 
support the work of the church in, in the ways that you are able. Please join in our prayer of dedication. Gracious and generous God, we are amazed by the good gifts you bestow in abundance. Thank you for food that sustains us on our journey. Thank you for the company of saints to whom we are joined. Thank you for giving us your work to do on earth. We offer back to you a portion of all that we have received. In celebration of your greatest gift, Jesus Christ, in whose name we pray. Amen. A community hymn, let us break bread together in our black hymnal number 330. <laughs>
please join me in the invitation to communion. Scripture says, you shall not live by bread alone. So what can you spread on your bread? This bread is spread with the butter of compassion and the jam of love. Jesus said, you shall not live by bread alone. So, how do you serve your bread? We, we serve this bread on the plates of plenty offered to the food in his table. Every Lent we hear, you shall not live by bread alone. So who sits at your table? All of God's children, ones I know, ones I don't know yet. Together in spirit, we eat this bread and drink this cup. All are welcome at this table. We remember the stories of wanderers bringing first fruit in a basket to give thanks for finding a home. And we give thanks for our kitchen tables and our precious sanctuary, both homes and places we share. And we remember that Jesus Christ, sitting among those whose feet he had washed at the Passover table of precious and ancient tradition, anticipated betrayal and desertion, pain and even death, but made a new thanksgiving, a new hope, a new way for peace, a new covenant of blessed bread and poured wine on a global table, inviting us always to share from our brokenness. O oh God, the sky speaks your glory and deep space your creation. Daybreak announces hope and starlight sings rest in a language that needs no translation but closing our eyes from prayer. We are revived, enlivened, warmed, and comforted by your presence. Beyond even the bright and sweet parables of our lives, you free us from definitions of relationship based on dominion and being dominated, and you lead us to words and works of reconciliation and grace. So reconcile, we pray, that the bread of our mouths and the cup upon which our hearts meditate be acceptable to you, O oh God, at this ordinary table and in our lives of redeeming. Break the bread for all to share. We pour the cup of blessing for all to share. I'll ask our deacons to come forward. And we'll serve everyone in the sanctuary before we all take together this.
all things are ready, in the sanctuary and at home. Let us receive the gift of God, the bread. We are never, never alone. alone. We live in this bread. Let us receive the gift of God, a cup of covenant. We find Christ in the cup because we share it. in the prayer of thanksgiving. Bountiful God, we give you thanks that you have refreshed us at your table. Strengthen our faith, increase our love for one another, and send us forth into the world in courage and peace, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. A blessing today, thinking back to our compassion camp, we put our hands out to receive a blessing, and then when we receive it, we bring it to our heart. May you know the blessing of faith and of love, and may you hold it always long.